Hi, my name is Jamie, and it's the uh, Labonna Bears in Glasgow. Uh, uh, today we're making a whole lemon sole with a prawn caper and lemon butter sauce. Uh, and then we're going to garnish off with some samphire and some fresh parsley and then a little bit of lemon. Okay. Start off with a lemon sole, using a little uh, table salt and white pepper. Getting that on both sides. Now using the table salt and white pepper instead of the uh, sea salt and cracked black pepper because they're both a little bit too harsh. And the uh, cracked black pepper on white fish. Um, some people like burn bits, so that's why we're using that. Uh, so I've got a, a nice <coughs> non-stick pan on the stove here. I'm going to put a little bit of oil. Why are you cooking it on the bone? Is it some more flavour as it cooked on the bone? Is yeah, well it keeps the fish mo uh, moist inside. Um, it's not going to dry out too much. Um, and it's, uh, it's nice for presentation as well. So I'm going to use uh, the white side as the presentation side, so I'm going to put that down in the pan first. So I'm going to leave that in the pan for uh, two minutes. Uh, I'm looking for a nice golden uh, brown colour. Uh, and then once that, uh, um, I'll turn the pan, turn the sole over and put it in the oven for another two minutes. And while that's cooking in the oven, I will then work on the potatoes and the garnish. So it's a trick to getting a nice sort of even browning, not to not to sugar the pan too much, just to yeah, yeah, move it a little bit so it doesn't stick. Um, but I'll just leave it the way it is. Um, and with the fish, where when you're cooking fish, you watch it coming up the side uh, for, for the cooking. Right. So that's how you know how, uh, how it's cooking. So, so by that you mean just it curls up a little bit at the edges? Is no, that... you, you you watch. It's sometimes harder with a whole fish because of the bones. Uh, but you watch the side of the fish and you'll see the, the colour working its way up the oh, fish okay. yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. how you know when it's ready to turn over. So we'll give it most of the time on the presentation side then we'll turn it over. And obviously it shows the white side because it's going to be prettier when it turns. Yes, uh, yes. How long have you been a chef, Jamie? Um, I've been a chef for 10, 10 years maybe. I've been in Le Bon Iberge for just over two years. What got you into it? Why, what, why did you, what made you think? Um, my dad's a fishmonger, so I was always in and out of kitchens, uh, we're doing delivery and stuff, so I always had a, I always had a real interest in the, in the kitchens. Um, and then obviously just with the TV and things, just watching everything going on, you get real, real interest. Oh, is fish, is fish your favourite thing to cook, or? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely one of my favourite things to cook. Um, <coughs> it's... Uh, it's nice to cook with. I think I like cooking with some salmon. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice looking bit of fish there, though, actually, yeah. That's got a nice colour on it, doesn't it? So I'm just going to put a little bit of butter in the pan and I'm going to put it in the oven. And I'm just going to put a little bit of grease proof paper over the top uh, and that's going to stop it colouring too much when it's in the oven. So it's stopping colouring or? Yeah, when it, when, it, when it goes in the oven uh, it can get too much heat. Yeah. So I'm just going to get that two minutes in there. So next we're going to do the uh, potatoes. So I have a pot here with hot water. And these uh, are Rosenville potatoes, which um, they have a, a nice uh, sort of red, a red colour in the in the skin. Are they quite waxy? Are they so they kind of hold together when they? No, they hold they hold together quite nicely. Mm. So when the lemon sole comes out, I'm going to do it all in the same pan. Uh, I'll take the, um, the sole out, put it on the plate. I'll put the pan back on the stove, and I'll put the butter in, try and get some colour in the butter, put some lemon on, and then I'll put my capers and my uh, prawns in, uh, and that's, that's basically it. And that'll be the sort of sauce will pick up the flavours from the cooking flavours? Yeah. From yeah. But some people will do it separately, but uh, all the flavours are in that pan, so it's best to utilise that and make the best of it. So I'm just putting this little pan on, 
a little bit of lemon. Just, just part of the garnish. So how long does it take to set up before each service? Is it sort of a couple of hours or three hours? Or so? we, we come in at 10 o'clock uh, and then the service starts at uh, 12 o'clock. So it's just preparation all the way until, until then. Uh, we always try and work uh, or as effectively as possible and just work in advance and just keep on top and it's always up. So I guess what you're doing is you're getting all the sort of con constituent bits, all the component parts for each dish ready to rock so that when the yeah. order comes in, um, you cook off the... Yeah, yeah. So we... Uh, all, all the sections have the fridges, and we all have a mise en place in the fridges, and it's always ready to go. Um, it makes it a lot simpler. I've walked in places that have not had the fridges on the section, and you just have a big walk in fridge, or maybe just a big fridge, and you're constantly running back and floors, and it's just, it's, uh, it's not good. <laughs> so, what's the best thing about being a chef? It's not going to be the hours. No, it's, it's not the hours. Uh, it's uh, seeing a dish from start to finish. Um, last week, we went to the uh, uh, fruit and veg supplier uh, and we got a few things in and uh, we, got to pick, we got to pick some asparagus and, 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 and uh, mix things when we got back. So that was really good when you get to do things like that. It's uh, quite rewarding. Yeah. So this is just for my sound fire. I've, um, I've already blanched it in the, in the pot of water. So I'm just going to be finishing off in there. Why do you make soil and butter? Uh, I like to cook it in the butter because of the flavour, but uh, if, you, if you just put the butter in and you don't put the oil in, the butter will burn. So the oil just stops from burning. Do you eat a lot of fish yourself? Is it one of your favourite favourite things to eat? Uh, as much as I can, yes. Um, I love uh, I said salmon. Salmon is one of my favourite fish. And uh, salmon. Even with your old man being a uh, being a fishmonger, fish supplier. Yeah, yeah. I used to I used to go with fish somewhere around. <laughs> So again, I'm going to stick with the, uh, the table salt and the white pepper. And I always season from a height, that way I don't get clumps of seasoning. And then the seasoning's uneven when you... What, what, what do you mean you season from behind? So when you the... do it from a height, oh, so, okay, the, the okay. seasoning falls. So if I do it too close, I'll get little clumps here. And... So what's like in here on a Friday, Saturday night? I'm guessing it's controlled, not chaos, but controlled. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's busy, um, but we're well organised. Um, we've got the three sections, there's always uh, one person in each section, the lord of the sauce and the veg, and there's one person running the whole thing. Uh, so everything's always as smooth as possible. Yeah. And do you, do it, so you blanch it in the hot water, then do you take out, do you put it in, in cold water? Just to yeah, so as so, soon as it's blanched in the hot water, uh, put it straight into, uh, into some ice cold water, and that'll stop it from colouring. Uh -huh. And also with the samphire, because it's from the sea, uh, it's quite salty, so I won't put any salt in there, but I'll put a little bit of pepper in with it. So I'm just going to check my fish. One more minute and that will be ready. Is it like doing a steak where you can tell by pressing against your, your, your thumb or your... Um, not quite. The, uh, the, the fish, uh, as I said, with the, um, when it comes up the side, that's, that's the best way to tell with fish. Uh, and when you're doing the sole, um, the, the flesh stays quite, quite soft anyway. You get, uh, on the top side, you get a little bit of um, the, the brown, a little bit of crunch, but not, not a lot at all. So you won't be able to tell that way. Uh, and obviously because of the bone from the centre, the bone's got to warm through as well for the rest of the fish. So during a normal service, presumably you'd be making this at the same time as making three other dishes, is that yes, right? Yes, yes. But however, we'll sort of the, uh, 
the veg and the, the potatoes, uh, that would come off the, the vegetable section, uh, so I would do the, the fish uh, and the sauces and things. Uh, so sometimes one dish can be three different things. You could do three. The meat, the sauce, the vegetables, and maybe some sort of uh, press garnish or, or something as so well. So it's a juggling act to try and get everyone to come together. Yeah, so everyone's, got, everyone's got to talk in the kitchen and know what's happening at the same time. Right, so I'm going to take my fish out now, get it plated up. And I'm just going to quickly put the pan back on the stove. I'm going to add some more butter. And does fish benefit from resting in the same way that meat does? Does it have the same? Uh, yes. Um, with fish, the fish should always be slightly undercooked. Yeah. Uh, nothing worse than uh, fish that's too dry. I'm just waiting for all the, the, the butter to melt and you can see it frothing. And once that's all uh, added, I'm going to add in uh, the prawns, the capers, and I'm going to squeeze some lemon juice in there. Has that become brown butter now that it's got a bit of colour on it? Is that the...? Yes. Yeah. So uh, now that I'm adding the prawns, I have to work fast because prawns will overcook very quickly. Doing it through your hand to catch the pitch, yeah. That's the whole sole with the prawn caper uh, butter sauce with samphire, lemon and the Rosenville potatoes. <laughs>